Hey, welcome to For the Story, the only podcast whose parents have died and is now fighting crime as a vigilante in Sudan dressed as a giraffe. My name's Avery. I'm Ash. This week we watched The Truman Show. Oh, actually, <laughs> we should talk about The Truman Show. But anyway, we also have in the studio today, Jeremy Johnson. Oh, man. Yeah. Glad to be here. Uh, you know, yeah. I'm pretty excited to talk about movies. Yeah. Get into some, get into some clashes. Maybe, you know, agree on a thing or two. Uh, yeah, we're going to get in a fight. We're not going to agree on it. <laughs> it's going to be Avery, great. I thought you talked to him about what the podcast was about. Now he's talking about agreeing about stuff. <laughs> in movies don't you know this is the only battle royale podcast <laughs> uh but jeremy tell us a little about yourself we're glad to have you here hey thanks uh well i'm uh you know feel like i'm probably kind of pretty similar to both of you guys in a lot of ways but you know i'm in my 30s in uh from california yeah already just and, two uh, things that are not similar about us in any capacity <laughs> I, I thought you're in california right now I, yeah, yeah that was a yeah, uh, from here. <laughs> so we just we just swapped. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I guess movie wise, I'll go ahead and say this: my favorite movie is Lawrence of Arabia, but my favorite director is John Carpenter. So I'm kind of all over the place. Oh hell yeah! So you're a fan of John Carpenter's The Thing. Uh, I am. Yeah, Ash doesn't like. I did. I don't. As I do. I'm just putting it out I, there. <laughs> I don't not like it. I just think it's okay. okay. And I think it's a The Shining ripoff. <laughs> That's all I said. I think that he tried to steal uh, the Kubrickian style in that film, and I'm not going to stand for it. So, uh, talking about Kubrickian movies, I don't know. I, I, it's bad segue. <laughs> bad segue. So, some people, I, I did read a review comparing Joker to uh, Clockwork Orange. Absolutely. Uh, by the way, that's me. what we really watched. Absolutely yeah. fucking kill me. Yeah. <laughs> I, so I feel like I compared it to like six or seven movies, none of them being that. Yeah, yeah. That one kind of yeah. takes me by surprise. I, yeah. I I see the most vague semblance of like a connection there, which is not the point of I think either movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I think totally I'm exactly. Gonna, I'm gonna thumbs down. Yeah, that, absolutely. That yeah. And also, we can all agree that that the Joker was filmed more stupidly than any Kubrick movie. Regardless of what you think, well, I think we can all agree. Kubrick's a better. I feel film. like Kubrick's a high like like boundary though. He's like such a visual director yeah, comparing that's, that's the two. Very fair. Yeah, yeah, Kubrick was like almost insane when it came to his yeah. shots, whereas Todd Phillips did due date. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> and the hangover. I mean, yeah. and that you know, one scene in Hangover that, Three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. The, the director is like, you know what, people like. The, the SJWs are why The Hangover 2 and 3 weren't good, so I made The Joker, which is the silliest train of logic I've ever heard. <laughs> the Hangover but 2 and 3 it's... are just bad. <laughs> They're just not good. <laughs> well, the first one's got its moments, yeah. right? So he's, he's, he's competent. He's 100% yeah. carried by his actors, though. 100%. Yeah. I don't know if you guys saw saw it. I don't think very many people did it. But his very first movie was a G.G. Allen biopic, oh like documentary. <laughs> oh, really? So like he can't. He like started from a very dark place. Because I mean, if you're I actually don't with know G. G. who G.G. Allen, Allen is. Allen is a very <laughs> Yeah. normal and sane person who's level headed oh, and know. just a good guy <laughs> just not weird in any I way. see I see the transference over to Joker yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I just always found that and I found that interesting when I realized that I was like oh so he went from a real dark place to like just sheer comedy for a decade and then he was like okay I'm gonna go back to my roots yeah that's cool of sorts I do like that he's branching out I, I, I like the I like the energy that he put behind this movie because it definitely has some kind of energy which uh, we can talk about in a little bit here. But before we really start talking about Joker, because I know we all have uh, a lot to say. This this movie's pretty dense. Um, I, I know we all have differing opinions. I can't wait to hash them out live on the show. But um, uh, we, we usually like to start the show by talking about some other movies, some totally random off-the-wall kind of crap that we've watched uh, this week. And Jeremy, since you're the guest, have you seen anything interesting? Um, yes, actually, the most, the most, I've been revisiting a lot of classics recently, so I'm not going to talk about those, but interesting new wise, I actually just saw, um, it's now I'm blanking on the name of it, but it's a YouTube movie, uh, but Charlemagne the God from the Breakfast Club, like, oh. produced it, and but it's actually pretty good, and it's that about, cool. it's about battle rapping. What? Yeah. I think I've heard uh, about this. It just came out this this year. Um, it just came out streaming, so I don't think it was really released in many theaters. So, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's, like, really just brand new. But it, it has some pitfalls in the sense that, like, the main character is, like, a super nerdy white kid who doesn't belong in the battle rap scene. Oh, but yeah. But 
um, Eminem also produced it and helped write a lot of the battle raps. So like, like eight mile, <laughs> kind of yeah. like that's cool though. I'm actually kind of always like that scene a lot so it brought a lot of the people that were in the movie um were professional are professional battle rappers that they like you, your acting is kind of shitty but like you do this well because yeah. that's what your job is so it's a lot of yeah, it's a lot did. of that yeah. um so i found it really really enjoyable and it kind of just took me by surprise because i like had never heard of it and i just kind of caught it and i was like what is this and then i was literally put it on thinking this is going to be corny as hell but i'm going to give it a chance and Found myself enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would. That's so fucking awesome. I wish I remembered what it was called right now. That basically would, you know, help it's okay. solidify this. There's, there's enough names that any reasonable person could Google it anyway. So it's yeah, like, like Charlemagne, Eminem, YouTube, Battle Rap, Charlemagne, Wire, yeah. YouTube Bam. movie. It's going to be the first thing that comes up. Uh, yeah, I don't so, think there's much competition in that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, dude, Enjoyable. that's awesome. That sounds fun. It, it's a YouTube movie. I forgot that that's like a thing. I know Rooster Teeth does some stuff like that, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's so, a YouTube yeah. red, right? Yeah. Or what are they called? Is that what they're still calling I it? think that's what it used to be called. That's I think what it, it used to be called, I believe. Yeah, it's like YouTube Premium or something, How or YouTube Pro or something like that. Now. so fucking quickly i don't understand it probably it probably wasn't very successful i don't I know like it's just like you, you, the, the youtube red logo yeah. looked like that u2 logo that they used when they were like raising money for something that bono was probably embezzling money for <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> whoa what a heavy <laughs> accusation how can you dislike bono i mean i yeah, just like every, he flies his hat oh, first he flies <laughs> his hat first class <laughs> by himself literally who wait what his hat who likes yes. bono that's my where you're coming from this insane perspective Avery. all right hard stance number one round one fight bono's cool mm. okay <laughs> what's your definition of cool avery i'm just very confused <laughs> he wears sunglasses all the time yeah that's not cool <laughs> that, you, the only way that that's acceptable is to be you're either blind or you're a dickhead yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. Or you either have to be blind or a jack. Yeah, so yeah. you could be Ray Charles yeah. and be both. He could be both. <laughs> yeah, Ray Charles. Ray Charles is cool. Ray Charles Ray sunglasses. Charles is fucking... Okay. All right. What? He's just like a bad guy. So, like, you ever watch his biopic? Oh, you is he really? biopic. Just he, okay. had, he had some demons. Oh, he had some problems. Oh, did he? <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. It's, I'm just thinking like... It's that. cool to have he demons, like kid. cool them. He was in the blues, bro. Yeah, I guess he, <laughs> he he was a he was a musical onion. Um. Oh. Oh. Peeling back the layers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How did the sh- how did Shrek become a lexicon for being deep? Like that's everything's confusing <laughs> to me right now. There's a lot of layers to Shrek, Ash. It's like an onion. Avery, yeah. I'm the one who goes to bat for a, Shrek being a good movie, and you always shit on it. So back to dude, you've up. never done I that. I hundred percent. I hundred. Roll the clip. We don't have clips. All right. <laughs> Avery, <laughs> what have you watched this week that you'd like to talk about? Uh, so we were actually just talking about it because I, I am a, a firm defender of found footage movies. I think that they're fun. I like the concept. I like the idea. It has a layer of believability until they like kind of take it over the cliff. Um, but uh, Sid and I just watched The Taking of Deborah Logan because it's on Shudder. So if you guys want to know what I'm watching, you could probably look at Shudder. But uh, uh, so uh, it, it, it's like... A totally decent movie, <laughs> it, but it was more fun, I think, to like poke fun at it a little bit than anything else. But uh, I just I like I like that people are still making found footage movies, even though like there was so much hate like thrown at it. I think earlier in the decade, and now it's like uh, I, there's been some like really good ones that always like pull me in. And that, not that this one's necessarily super great, but uh, it, it was decent we enough should, for me. I felt like I we yeah. should make a found footage movie, Avery. Yeah, we could do we could it. Totally do it. Jeremy, do you want to be in our found footage? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll find some footage. Yeah. So uh, we could do something like that. Hell yeah, that'd be excellent. I mean, it's like cheap to make. I think that's what I like about it. Uh, is that like it's cheap? Uh, I feel like I could make a found footage movie on my phone and edit it together. <laughs> it's so, nine hours yeah. long. <laughs> No, I think I have enough storage in my no phone one for that. Ha- No one has the balls to make a found footage movie longer than thir- an hour 30, I feel like. so. Yeah, yeah. Hour 30, it starts to get a little, like, nausea-inducing, I think. Yeah. There's only so many times that, like, the girlfriend can be like, why are you still filming? You know? So, <laughs> That's, like, the first uh, line of the movie. Uh, We're writing it already. <laughs> it's going to be great, dude. <laughs> they get their one. <laughs> you get a great impersonation of Sid right now. 
<laughs> so, did you hear that? He's right out there. <laughs> Felix, you, you, know, you, you got your soundproof uh, squares out there. That's, fine. that's true. That's true. It's like a, the it's like a black hole for sound in here. It's yeah. like I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, Ash, yeah. hit me with some movies that you've watched recently. Something interesting or something bad? Okay, I'm um, curious. So I think the notable thing this week is I watched In the Tall Grass, uh, which is based on a Stephen King short story. So I had like pretty good expectations where i'm just like oh the ending's gonna be fucking bad um <laughs> that's too <real. laughs> yeah <laughs> great movie it's okay. got the guy who plays ocean master from aquaman in it oh, but he has a mustache sold. and uh basically uh he, guy and his sister his sister's like pregnant she throws up on the side of the road they hear a little kid being like help me inside of tall grass they walk in they immediately get separated the grass like moves them around and they're lost in the grass for like months meanwhile there's a giant space rock that turns people into angry people uh and then oh my Ocean god master did this like tries no. to murder them and he's like so fucking jacked still from that movie and he looks like <laughs> he looks like dad captain america with the tom Selleck mustache it's fucking weird is it a sci-fi, a horror, a sci-fi horror? What is it? Like what a is thriller this? horror. It sounds like a thriller horror. Yeah. That's kind of fun. This is this just came out on Netflix, didn't like it? This week, because yeah. I was, yeah, I was about to watch it. I saw it up there. I was like, this seems like something I would watch. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll probably end up it's watching. It's pretty that. good. It gets a little bit redundant. Yeah, that seems decent. But I generally thought, like, you know, once I, I go into it with the same expectations as me, ending's not going to be great. But uh, it was good for what it was, and yeah. Oh, real quick, last thing that I watched. Okay. Have you guys ever seen Cube? Yes. No. Yeah. I watched Cube this week for the first time. And I was like, holy crap, actually better than I expected by like a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's another movie too that you could tell probably had like a ten thousand dollar budget. Easily, easily. Spend. Probably cheap maybe cheaper than that, but maybe. They got the it guy from like Star like Trek Atlantis or Stargate Atlantis. Star Trek Atlantis. Uh, I'd watch that. Star Trek Atlantis, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would too. Uh, <laughs> and uh yeah, and they built like four rooms, or they probably built like two rooms they and just like changed out the colors. Changed the colors, yeah, yeah. Which is fucking genius from a set building standpoint. Sure. It's so good. Um yeah. I ended up being like, wow, this is actually kind of interesting. The characters are kind of cool. I, I was like invested throughout. Super cheesy movie. It's Canadian. You can't really tell that it's Canadian. I don't know what exactly you would be looking for. But um, it, there you they go. say things Cube. like big, sorry. Oh, is that is that it? <laughs> yeah, so, and then like randomly they'll throw in Manitoba. Um, Manitoba? <laughs> in Cube? Yeah. yeah, someone will be like, Great. hey, I'm a grown ass Manitoba, dude. You can't talk to me like that. Something like that. <laughs> well, yeah, hell yeah. So, uh, so cool, guys. Uh, I'm pretty interested in talking about Joker. Yeah. Um, you want to just skip it? <laughs> just skip it and go to the next one. <laughs> no, uh, no, no. It's it's interesting. There's a lot to say here. There's we we got good stuff. We got bad stuff. That's all coming up in a little bit. But uh, uh, before we really get into that, I know Ash, you have something to say about the budget, right? Yeah, I have something to say about the budget. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Um, uh, I, I, I stopped taking my pills, and, and when I stop taking my pills, the budget breakdown comes. I don't have anything good this time. Just fucking drop it. Do the drop. This is the budget breakdown. All right, the drop's been Boom. dropped. That's it. All right. We have a, we have a sound bite <laughs> we put in. For that. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah gotcha. I put it in post, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, believe it or not, we don't play that massive sounding fucking file live. All right. Uh, the Joker. I made it. The Joker had a budget of between 50 and 60 million. Uh, it came out October 4th, 2019, at a runtime of two hours, 12 minutes. It has made total $105.9 million domestically, $152.2 million foreign, with a grand total of $258.1 million. We're just outside of opening Something. weekend. Pretty decent. Yeah, yeah pretty, pretty decent. Deep. Pretty sure it broke, it broke a record yeah. of some sort. Really? Yeah. yeah. October. Uh, October releases. Oh, okay. It's a pretty big record. It's a pretty yeah, big record. That is, that's pretty intense. Adjusted, too. Yeah, especially, especially for a movie like that. 
right? I mean, like, it makes sense. It kind of fits. It's got that thriller thing going on. I don't know. No, it was 100% media hype about the movie that made people want to go see it. Um, yeah, probably. If 100% yeah. this movie would be in the middle, middle of the pack and probably everyone would have appreciated it more, I think. Um, but it's doing pretty well. It's got some interesting stats. Uh, second opening weekend of all time for The Fall in general, with the number one, of course, being It. Um, it is ranked currently 21st in DC Comics movies. Uh, what else we got here? 45 in worldwide openings. Uh, fourth highest rated R opening weekend of all time. But I am going to ask you some Shit. questions about overseas totals uh, for all time in terms of openings. Uh, so, oh no. Overseas, Joker came in at 37th uh, all time for an opening weekend. Um, care to venture a guess so, who came in front of it? The top 36 movies. All right, overseas. Overseas. A little bit different. When I think overseas, it's like I think about movies that like probably did well in China, right? Because that's probably like the second, the next biggest overseas market. Yeah, it is. I feel like it's probably like three of the Fast and the Furiouses. All right, well, right. Like which like ones? Just mind numbing, mind numbing. Oh, that means they're in there. <laughs> yeah. Fast, Fast Five, probably. Yeah, right? like the newer ones. Yeah, because those were the ones were a little bit bigger of a release. Hmm. Right. I feel uh, like the bigger and the. Nope. Kind of more dumber blockbuster E ones do really ones well, do really well because yeah. they can. The language barrier doesn't really necessarily matter as much. It's just a lot of explosions. That sounds the same yeah. in Mandarin as it does in English. Nah, that's where you're so, wrong. You got to learn more Mandarin, dude. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know Mandarin. So that's fair. <laughs> uh, so, so Fast Five nope. probably right. No Fast Five. Shit. Uh, fast Six. We can't. We can't do this. I'm not getting it. There's there's a hundred of them. <laughs> no, it's not fast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at least one of them has to be in there. <laughs> That's definitely true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, <laughs> Transformers. I was gonna say, I was gonna say Transform- yeah, yeah. Transformers. Maybe like Mission Impossible Rogue Nation or just some oh, yeah. big stupid block. Blo- Actually, I like that movie, but yeah, Mission, uh, Mission uh, Impossible Fallout made it on the top 100, but it came in at 83rd. So it's a little mm, bit. That's you know, yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. You see that? Uh, I would say probably almost, almost definitely every Transformers movie. I know that they're really successful in China. I, I, I know that they are. Let me see how many made it above. Yeah, because I, I know, like, I think it was whichever one it was. It was one of the ones um, that just came out. It was just two. Just two of them. Or two of them. Oh, made okay. It. Probably the 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 one with Mark Wahlberg. I know, like, specifically catered toward a Chinese market. Uh, Let's see if that's. I forget which one it is, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not looking. I'm not Googling Transformer, the one with Mark Wahlberg. Uh, <laughs> I feel like the government will. You know, come you're going to find it out too quick. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't need to know. Uh, it's Transformers <laughs> 3 and Transformers Age of Extinction. Oh, uh, okay. That's the Mark Wahlberg one. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. I think I think it is right. I, I honestly I don't know. I've never seen a single Transformers. Oh. Really, the first one's actually kind of fun. Yeah, the first one's fun. It, it, like seriously, they have like a, they have like a racist uh, caricature of a black person that's Soul. a robot. Yeah. It's pretty perfect. Yeah. It's, you had me at racist. It's like perfectly <laughs> mid two thousands. Like it is. It is a a a transformer that beatboxes, break dances, and has a black man voice, and it is real weird. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> I, f- I it's forgot about that. I think I blocked that. Yeah. Motorized car, a racial profile. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. weird how they're an alien, but <laughs> they, they still have a black guy. Like that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, Were so. they blatant about it? Was it like a Monte Carlo or like a Impala or something? Like, <laughs> was it something where you're like, obviously a black guy drives that? Uh, <laughs> did it have? Did it have alien rims? <laughs> One sec. Let me. I will Google. <laughs> no, you're looking at- <laughs> Like, now I gotta know to what level they went. (laughs) Okay, so number one, his name is Jazz. Eh, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, when I think of the great jazz players, they're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's very fair. Um, One sec, what kind of car is he? Hmm. One sec. Oh, he's a a Pontiac Solstice. (laughs) 
Oh, that was no. all fucking lost me. ads. Yeah, I, I was going to say, like, if it was something like, oh, my God, what, Carlo? Yeah, no, he, he lost me. Pontiac Solstice. But, uh, yeah. yeah. That's what was like my first that was, like, that was definitely product placement, too. Like, there, there's no way it hasn't. It wasn't. Are you saying that every, all of the time, cars are... every time they do a close-up of the brand of the car in the movie, that's a product placement, Avery? Listen to yourself. That's, if it's a Michael Bay film, yes. <laughs> yes. Michael Bay set, will sell anything on any movie set. Yeah. Oh, Proudly. Yeah. I, I always had a problem with the Transformer movies because, like, they always, like, mistakenly got scales wrong. So, like, there's, like, a shot in the first one where, like, uh, Shia LaBeouf has, like, this pair of glasses that he needs to, like, read them. I don't know. Whatever it is. It's their magic glasses. And then oh. uh, Optimus Prime picks them up, <laughs> and they're, like, eight feet tall. He, like, holds them in his <laughs> finger, like, so the audience can see it. But it's, like, in, like, my fingers, they would be, like, a normal pair of glasses. But it looks like a normal pair of glasses that would fit his face. <laughs> and it, it's, like, as tall. It's, like, they it's grew like to eight shield. feet. Yeah, it's insane. It's yeah. so weird. And, uh, I, I and they do this. other stuff like yeah. that all the time. This, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like scale issues. It's just like to like make sure the audience can like see what's going on. Because they assume rightfully that their audience is fucking stupid. Um, oh, oh, poor guys. I, I like the first Transformers yeah, movie. Yeah, me too. I, I, but anyone who watched like past the it. second one it is yeah. truly such a gullible moron. Um, <laughs> having never seen any of them, though, I do believe Bumblebee that just came out got rated. Oh, reviews. that one was good. Haven't seen I it. That. It was good. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I don't know. Either. Is that is that like too much of a spinoff? Do we not consider that Transformers? That's movie? totally. Like, that's absolutely a Transformers right. movie. Broke, I think I don't know if it's the same canon. director or anything, but it I definitely know. broke canon. I will say. Oh, okay. I won't spoil it, but well, it still, they they took it in a new direction. Like they changed it up a little bit, and like they, apparently it, it turned out being really good. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's what we should talk about sometimes. Yeah. Maybe I'll. Yeah, when we I'm have, sure it's on VOD yeah, by now, right? Have a fucking minute. We're so bombarded with movies constantly. Um, yeah, well, it's that time of year too. You know, it's like still like coming off the end of the summer into the Halloween season. A lot of movies come out this time of year, so yeah, I'm not mad about it. No. Yeah, yeah. We we like are trying to cram as many blockbusters in as we can. It's just We're like doing three and two weeks. So it's going to be crazy. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's fun. Like we we like it. We like. It's expensive. <laughs> that part's not fun. Give us money, listeners. Yeah. The fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> My bank account number is. Um, <laughs> or give us give us a sponsorship Almo Draft House because yeah. oh my god that'd be actually pretty something cool. tells me you're not gonna be hearing from Pontiac anytime soon <laughs> I'm pretty sure we just talk shit about the solstice <laughs> Jer- and I don't think Jeremy Jeremy did all take that, that off the table Jer- take that I, I, I'm a guest and you know what uh, I love Pont- I, Pontiac Trans Am Dream Car sponsor Jeremy just the- <laughs> yeah. give me a give me a Grand, grand Am or a Trans Am that I can drive to movie theater and all yeah. Yeah. I'll say all the good things hell yeah. yeah hell yeah I like the Trans Am too that's what, like with the big bird on the hood it's just yeah. fucking tight. Yeah. Uh, okay. Ever since that Nelly video. Let me give you a couple uh, yeah. hinties. See if we can uh, we can get a oh, for some of these yeah, movies. Yeah. There's got to be an Avengers. There's got to oh, be like Endgame. We can just yeah. fucking take Marvel out. They kill everything. That's why I hate yeah, doing definitely. highest grossing anything. Is because it's always like, oh, it's the Avengers and Deadpool. Yeah. And Especially in the X-Men. past couple of years. Yeah. It's just yeah. Um, okay. Um, uh, Tom Hanks uh, finds. Uh, Christ, Da Vinci, da Vinci Code. Da Vinci Code, perfect. Uh, horny. Bam! Horny moms. That would have taken me so long. <laughs> did you say horny moms? I did say horny moms. Horny moms. Uh, what? Who's in it? Give me something. <laughs> <laughs> it's actors. If I told you who the actors were, you still wouldn't fucking know. Um, oh no! This movie again, popular with horny moms. Oh, Magic Mike. Oh, that's actually a solid guess, but no. Oh. Is it uh Fifty Shades of Grey? It is Fifty Shades of Grey. Very good. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's just horny women. Yeah, it's just everybody. I, which in I didn't want to necessarily admit to just now. <laughs> I think like young, like all women, just really like liked that it. for whatever reason. Uh, you know, I didn't ever see that movie. I remember there being a ton of hype behind it. I don't know if it's good or not. I really just don't know. There's like three or something. Yeah, and it's, there's they, three. They've, they've all like been. Ne- like overwhelmingly negative reviewed, but they all make a bunch of money. Uh, Insane. Uh, Insane. Um, what else we got in here? Oh, um, I bet a hunger games or something was probably up there. Actually, mm. I'm not seeing any hunger games. That's, that's interesting. I feel like that, that has Potter. like very oh, broad appeal. Bunch of Harry, Harry Potter. Potter does too. Bunch of Harry. Oh, Potters. really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, apocalypse movie. Apocalypse movie. I mean, uh, Armageddon came out in the early te- uh, teens. 
Um, is it, uh, is Dwayne the Rock Johnson in it? Dude, you expect so much of me and <laughs> I'll go ahead and answer if he's not, he should be. Yeah. Is it, uh, <laughs> is it San Andreas? No, it's not San Andreas. Damn it. Man, that's, uh, yeah, no. Is it, uh, that it's John Cusack. Me. Oh, 2012. 2000. Oh, wow. I hate that you yeah, know it based on bad. that. Um, yeah. Oh, a uh, character yeah, from uh, Harry I'll Potter uh, is in movie featuring talking inanimate objects. Talking inanimate objects? Yeah. A character from Harry Potter. Actor from Harry Potter. Sorry. Oh, okay. Actor from Harry Potter. Talking inanimate. Oh, my God. Give us another hint. Um, uh, a flower. Fucking flower? What? <laughs> this is shit. This is um, fucking genius shit I'm throwing down. Um, consuming uh, five dozen eggs. Oh my god. Uh, the only thing I'm thinking of is Cool Hand Luke. That's obviously not. I don't know. It, it. It's a. Okay. It's Beauty five and the Beast. Eggs. Um, oh. Talking in oh. my, my Gaston reference. I'm a genius. You guys just don't get me. I, I see. Uh, a fucking flower? Wait, hold yeah. on. A flower? Is the, there a flower in there? The, the rose that is the thing with the curse that's in under the thing. And it's like a oh, glowy okay, rose. Okay. That did that well internationally? Oh, yeah. That's like it made so $182 million surprising. internationally. Wow. Wild. Well, shit. Um, I would not have ever guessed that one. And, yeah, I would have never guessed that one. I, like, forgot that movie existed. <laughs> but uh, Emma Watson was in yeah. that. No, it's all coming back to me. Yeah. There you go. Very weird that's, that's, that I That's out. Disney for you. Disney um, Lady in the you Tramp. Wanna, you want to do one more, and then we'll uh, move on yeah. to our expectations yeah. section? Sure. Uh, most Hell famous yeah. hip thrust in, the mod- in modern cinema. Oh my god. I feel like I should know this. But uh, it could be. It's magic mind. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> is, I don't know. Hip I, thrust. I don't know. Yeah. Hip thrust. Is it. Oh my god. I feel like I should. Is it, is it magic Mike? I'm just going to say it. I already said it wasn't. Like, magic Mike isn't on the list, Avery. Um, Damn it. Really should listen more. Uh, it She's takes place really in New York. Magic Mike on Hip thrust, New York. New York hip thrust. Hmm. It's from a group of movies I took off the list earlier. Oh, Spider Man 3. Spider Man 3, that is correct. Yeah! Yes! Because there's that scene where he dances where he has the hair. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. The most famous. I wouldn't get. Yeah. I I don't know if I would call that one of the most famous. Name one that's more famous. Saturday Night Fever. Modern cinema. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Mm. That's kind of a good point. <laughs> uh, this isn't part of the game. <laughs> what the hell? Are you, what are you, what are you doing gonna, to us here? I'm going to tell unfair. you all the things you've disappointed me about in the last year. Um, and I don't know well, Jeremy, um, so it's just you, Avery. Sorry, bud. <laughs> you, this uh, podcast isn't long enough to name all my disappointments. I, <laughs> I can call my mom and dad and get them on the line. And they can just ramble for hours. You would do it! <laughs> Actually, uh, Avery, don't make jokes about content, all right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, real quick, I'm gonna get another beer and use the bathroom. Can we pause? Yeah, sure. Cool. Oh, it wasn't me. Yeah, yeah, it was me. I was like, I didn't think it was. I've drank like three beers. Oh, uh, <laughs> real, real quick, while that little pause was happening, just because I felt like an idiot not remembering the movie that I liked recently, uh, I looked it up, and it's called Bodied. Oh, by, by Joseph Kahn. Hell yeah, okay. that's just great. So yeah, no. I'm glad. I'm glad because uh, that that sounds pretty fucking cool. I just didn't want to leave it all like hanging out there. Like, oh, yeah, that's good. Hell yeah, yeah. bodied. Body. Fairly solid. Body. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I'm going to look into that. that. That sounds like a fun movie to watch. That's the one with Charlemagne. And, uh, yeah. Hell yeah. That's, that sounds real cool. Yeah. Uh, sweet. Um, so generally, our next step, uh, what, 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 the, the way the flow goes here is we like to talk about our expectations, or at least our expectations as, as close as we remember them yeah. before we went to the theater. And sometimes if you um, didn't sometimes really have a lot, yeah. maybe a trailer or two that you thought looked cool or didn't look cool. We'll even do that. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. And just okay. talk about whichever, whatever you want. Okay. Just, yeah, I have, I have both those. Oh, cool. Well, 
That sounds like you're volunteering to start. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, well trailer-wise, actually, I was mentioning to you before we actually started recording that I had no idea they are doing, like, a second part to The Shining. And oh, for Slate. something that I should be excited about, holy crap, I was so underwhelmed. And I was like, this looks awful. And I hadn't seen Ewan McGregor in years. And I was like, this is what he's doing now. And, and man, I was just so not pumped for it. But directly before that was the new Terminator. And as for a franchise I haven't cared about since three came out and I was like, just hated it. Yeah. That's, I don't know what, 2004, 2005 or four or something like that. So it's been like 15 years since I've cared about Terminator. This one actually has me a little excited. Yeah. Hell yeah. The track on that, on that, um, trailer is so cool. I love the song that they have backing it. I don't know if you noticed. I, I can't. I can't picture that oh, in my head God, right now. But I do think the trailer looks good. Yeah. I mean, I just everything about it. Like, I feel like they might make this one better than the last like four have been. So yeah. I'm pretty excited four. about that. Yeah. And very not excited about the new Shining. Yeah. Thing. I think we we talked a little bit about the new yeah. Shining. Doctor Sleep. We're, we're, yeah. I think we're gonna end yeah. up seeing it because we have already reviewed yeah. the Shining. Um, yeah. But so speaking we, of we, you we'll and probably McGregor, talk about it. In my my trailer experience, I got to see the trailer for Birds of Prey. Um, <sighs> oh my god, I, it looks so awful. Um, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I believe we that. Need to, I need to yet, stop I believe it. giving people acting roles because they're hot guys and girls. Like Margot Robbie as Harlequin or Harley Quinn in in the trailer, she says the word Harlequin, but she says it so fucking weird. Sophie Perez uh-huh. is in it. Uh, they have really shitty CGI button Lou hyenas for for Harley Quinn, and uh, Ewan McGregor is the bad guy. So, oh, really? Yeah, Ewan McGregor. What is what's going on, man? Yes. He just like doesn't. He like took time off, and now he's like, yeah, I don't really care anymore. Yeah, like, he'll, he'll just be in it for the money. Like, I can't blame him. I, I totally get I, that. He's a name, kind of right. Like, yeah, should be. I mean, this, he's yeah. I, my favorite role of his was as a guy who pretends to be a good wizard in Harry Potter. He was in Harry Potter? Yeah, well, he's the second one. What? Yeah. Wait, really? I'm pretty sure that was him. Now you got me fucking tripping, uh, dude. Uh, wait, was I, I, I don't know what I, you're I, I don't know if that was him. I, I, I don't can neither confirm nor deny. I, I haven't seen that movie in so long, I have no idea. You literally yeah, no watched idea. the Harry Potter movies like a week ago, dude. I watched the first one like a week ago. I didn't watch the second one. You literally one. <laughs> were t- you were telling me all this shit about fucking, uh, what's it called? Uh, you keep oh, talking about how your drinking problem isn't a problem. <laughs> clearly, you can't remember a week ago. Yeah, it, you were talking about the Marauders the map. On. <laughs> oh, no, he, he wasn't. It was a completely different fucking guy. I'm an idiot. Oh, it's the guy who um, played uh, Professor Lupin. No, not Lupin. Is that what you're talking about? No. Oh. No. Well, okay. <laughs> Gilderoy Lockhart. That's who I thought. It oh, was. that's the second one. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Oh, well, I don't know that. <laughs> I didn't watch that one. Yeah. You also said Ewan McGregor, though. Yeah. Right? Just yeah. I don't think, I'm pretty sure that's not Ewan McGregor. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it isn't. He looks kind of similar. Um. Anyway, I, uh, I don't know what my point was, but yeah, the point is, is he's in bad stuff right now. He's trying to go through a McGregor Renaissance, and it's not going to work. I, I wish the best for him. Yeah. I hope it works yeah, out. I'm neutral. You know? Yeah. It's, it's a, uh, I don't know. I, I haven't seen the, the Birds of Prey. Uh, trailer yet, but you, Ash, you mentioned something pretty poignant to me um, regarding Joker <laughs> and, and imagining Joaquin Phoenix. Was that as... your Joker impression? That's pretty good. <laughs> I just have a weird un- laugh, yeah. and people at work have been fucking saying that to me. And like, listen, I don't want to like, kill worried you. Worried about being around you. But I will. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, you, you mentioned something very poignant. It is like imagining Joaquin Phoenix up next to Margot Robbie or anywhere near the Suicide Squad. And it's like kind of like, oh, that's so disheartening. No, they can't be in the same room together. It's it's just like such a completely different kind of movie. Maybe he can teach and, her how to act. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't know. It's just a, a very disheartening thought that they might try to do that. They might. Like, I don't know I, what the like, fuck they're doing. I did. Yeah, it's like they, I, I think they're gonna reboot Batman again. Oh, I think that's what's about to happen. I think they're just gonna. Me. 
I think they're just going to redo all the Batman yeah, movies. Yeah, I don't feel like that needs to happen. No, DC just, no, already no. fucked it up when they just... They blew it. They, yeah. just have, they don't have anything linear. Everything's just standalone, and they're like, screw it. I'm, yeah, I think that's what they're going for at this point. They're just trying, I'm like... I'm hoping so. Because their standalone movies have been far more successful than their yeah. like ensemble movies. And, and so... I, I have yeah. my many rants about Batman. Avery knows I, I hate Batman. Um, because he's a billionaire cop who just kind of beats up the mentally ill and poor um, and is generally a bad guy. And if he didn't exist, Gotham would probably be a better place. Um, <laughs> he's a bad guy. I, I agree. He, he He's nah. like, oh, super terrorists? I'm not going to kill them. I'm going to put them in an under-equipped uh, like, fucking jail that they'll break out of and kill hundreds more people because I want to feel like I'm a good boy. Fuck you, Batman. <laughs> so so far we're so far we agree. Yeah, he yeah. would do. He's a bil- he would do so much better good for Gotham if he just gave his billions to like mental health facilities. Oh my god, that. you're totally right. Joker, like, there you go. Joker would be you want to say housed Gotham? by the system. He would <laughs> yeah. right. <laughs> like, yeah, so he would still have those. He'd yeah. still have those weekly therapy visits. He could still be on medication. Yeah, you, but no, he wouldn't have to kill Robert De Niro yeah. to, to like get back. At, no. Oh, we're in spoilers yeah. territory, oh, by, by the way. Let's the let's way. let's just announce that, <laughs> just so you guys know. <laughs> yeah. No, um, Bat- Batman. Generally, like the problem is there are too many poor people, but yet they still have a fucking billionaire that lives there. How does that happen? How? Yeah. how? Yeah, Everyone's yeah. fucking. Any city has any city has its nicer parts. Yeah, but they have like true. one billionaire. Like that's <laughs> so much fucking money. It's like no one's looking around and going like, "What? What the fuck's this guy doing? He just like inherited <laughs> this money because his daddy died, and he like just lives in this house like a fucking creep." No, I we can take him. <laughs> <laughs> we can take him. Let's get him. He, he does have a, an excessive amount of cool gadgets, though. Yeah, he literally for which to, spends, to immobilize the poor. He spends one point two billion dollars <laughs> making a kryptonite suit to fight Superman for no fucking reason. He could have invested that in infrastructure. Is that like canon? Yeah. Did that really happen? Yeah, he like pretty yeah. much every run of like long term run of, of Batman he ends up fighting Superman and ends up building like a kryptonite something that like costs so much money because it's the rarest thing on earth yeah oh. idiot that's eh, yeah, well, fucking kind of brick yeah well shit now we know um sorry well you got really passionate <laughs> there uh what I watched this week or what were my expectations <laughs> what are we talking about um uh so for Joker I actually don't I, I definitely saw the Doctor Sleep trailer mm. Um, and I, I was thinking something pretty similar. I don't know. Like, I'm definitely going to give it a shot because there's just, just a chance. I'm going to see it because of its association with one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, so my favorite movie. So I feel like I, I feel like I have to. Yeah. I like you and McGregor. However, it comes out in less than a month. I had never heard of it until today. It's it comes out in less than a month. No. The, the studio is not pushing it for a reason. No. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I could be right. I want to see how the director pays homage to Kubrick. I want to see if they're able to replicate any of the cool things about that style, or if you know. But I, I don't, just not interested. It's also a book. Didn't it just come out in like 2013? The book for it. Yeah, pretty recently. I, I don't know how well it like sold or anything. I, I really don't. No I don't keep up with that anymore, stuff. But. Avery. <laughs> yeah, it didn't sell anything, but yeah. you know it's Stephen King. It's Stephen so, King. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, on its own, it probably wouldn't have sold anything. But people buy Stephen King books. He's like the author. He's like the author of rock star or something. Yeah. I don't know. I bought it on my Kindle. I inherited it from my dead grandma, and I threw it out the window. That's what I think. Oh of. my god, that's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. You threw the digital book out the window yeah. after you bought it on fuck the Kindle. Books. This is a fuck books podcast. Oh yeah, we're the uh, the first official anti book podcast. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I watch a lot more movies and I read books. So, All right, so we, we do too. You get to learn. You get to learn. People are like, <laughs> the book was so much better, and I'm always like, well, I'll never yeah. know. So the book's always the book better. Cool. The book has the book has a thousand pages to describe in like really really detailed details. Yeah, and I, exactly but I going. have like a semi life, so yeah, I don't yeah, really want to. I, I do actually pages. have a book. I wish I could for lunch breaks right now. So I, I'm oh my of, god, dude, get off the show, dude! I'm Come sorry. on, I'm getting off. I just want to be honest with you. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, I mean, like Joker though, as far as my expectations go, they were bottom of the goddamn barrel. I was just like, not, I didn't want to see this movie. I, I, uh, the only reason I, I was somewhat interested is because of Joaquin Phoenix, mm-hmm. because I think he's really good. He's a good actor. And, uh, and yeah, he, he's just like really good. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I, I was like kind of dreading seeing this movie. And uh, I, I feel like I feel like my expectations were surpassed. So I think we're gonna get into that in a little bit here. But um, yeah, I'd say mine were yeah. pretty middle. I just knew like I kind of just went into it like this movie has been hot. like, dude, they fucking shut down a theater like just south of me because there was like a credible gun threat. I'm like, dude, this is fucking rad. But also, this movie's gonna make so much money that it probably shouldn't have made. Um, and, mm. and then also when I heard that it had an eight minute standing ovation at fucking the Venice Film Festival, I'm like, this has got to be a troll. Wait, really? Like, yeah, dude. That's interesting. That is. I also uh, read that fu- and I really? found that very odd. Very unbelievable. Huh. Like, I feel people like. People clapped at the end of the, the movie in my theater. Really? There were only like maybe t- 10 people in my theater. And yeah, yeah like three oh, of them clapped. the way you see a movie, though. Yeah, and Nobody. like three of the 10 <laughs> clapped. Yeah. Oh, I will yeah. say. I did, yeah, I, did, I clapped. I clapped. I did see this movie with my mom, so that did color things for me. I will say that because she really wanted to see it because it did so well at the Venice Film Festival. So I did see it with my mom. Uh, took her out to a little little movie and uh, yeah. Huh. All right. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. That's a good way to see a movie. Yeah. yeah. Except for the part where, he, well, well, never mind. I'm not going to spoil. No. It. Yeah. Spoiler, oh. He kills his mom. And yeah. We're, 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 we're past spoilers, when, he, when, he, yeah. when he smothers his mom to death. Yeah. You know, well, the funny just, like, thing slowly is, slowly turn and look at her and be like, <laughs> no. It's so funny because no, my, 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 my mom and I always joke that like she doesn't want to suffer towards the end of her life, and like I'm just like, hey, I know how to use a pillow, mom. And when that moment happened, <laughs> my mom was funny. And I looked at each other and just started cracking up. Like it was. That's so awesome. Funny. <laughs> Probably the only people in the theater laughing at that exact moment. Yeah, that was intense, though. It was one of the somewhat more effective things. That was part of his like final act transformation, which I actually, I guess we can move on into pros now. Yeah, is that fair? Yeah, everybody ready? Sure. We're doing it. We're, My we're... expectation was very low. Okay, continue. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Threw that in there real Surpassing quick. My expectation low. <laughs> low expectations. We're passing through the pro- the pros barrier. We're talking good things, Ash. I know you have something good to say about this movie. I know you do. Um. Yeah, I like how it like yes. it was about. Um, it kind of got to the root thing that I was talking about with Batman, which was there was like a class consciousness, class conflict kind of element to the movie. That being said, it also was like it kind of happened on accident, um, which was like a yeah. weird thing. Um, yeah, I also liked some you of think like. Those th- do you think those things are typically planned, or how how would one? So plans. So I can see like a that. plan, but like for, for, it's, it's specifically what happened. Yeah. Like, but wait, what, 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 what? Can you clarify your question? Sorry. Well, if you, you I see, it seems like you think it's a negative that it just kind of sprung out of uh, uh, accident. No. Sprung by accident. Is that not? No, no, no. Not okay, so I, let me rephrase that. I, I was like. I like that it had that element, but I kind of didn't like the the whole inference. And I'm not even sure if I'm looking into it too deeply that like, oh, like, look, it stems from like a crazy person doing a random a- like it, it stems from insanity, that kind of mm. subtext to it, um, mm. which I and like it's riotous and mob like when it's like, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It was just kind of like a it had a weird underpinning and I, it just didn't feel like cohesively thought out. But um, I did okay. like that, like, because, yeah. The big problem with Gotham is like massive wealth inequality, like beyond any city you can imagine. And like they have like three billionaires and like the rest of the people like fucking rot. Um, and just like generally how they portrayed the city, I think really also played into that. I think that it was probably the best portrayal of Gotham. Um, I think so too. It felt yeah. lived in. Yeah. yeah, it felt real. It, it like reminded me of things that I've seen before mm-hmm. in I, the city. I was constantly not even thinking of it being Gotham. I was just nonstop thinking of it being New York. Yeah, like it was just. It, it was just very much like, like New York. It just felt like seventies New York. Yeah, like, or, or like in the eighties, but or like Sixth uh, Street on Seventh and <laughs> Sure, <laughs> or Seventh Street on <laughs> Yeah, just um, shit everywhere. Red River, <laughs> people being dicks. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it like kind of like it, it definitely felt very real. It felt like a very real depiction of what urban poverty looks like and uh and i thought that that was impressive i mean i mean like i i like that it 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 took on confidently took on that like really depressed urban urban life and like used it as part of the scenery 
effectively. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I think that was one of the better parts too. Especially because he uh, spent so much of the time fucking walking around that city. It, it better look yeah. good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it, it's like, you know, Gotham as a city has always been portrayed. Depending on what Batman movie you're watching, or or really what what movie you're watching that takes place in Gotham it's always like said like oh this city is rife with crime but it's never really shown other than like comically like villainous mobsters uh this is like the first time I think it's really been revealed to have like like real grime yeah. like it felt grimy I like I'm also like glad that, that it I'm yeah. also yeah I'm also glad that it wasn't always dreary and dark and like like there were daytime shots and it wasn't it yeah. was sunny and like you know it wasn't just always rainy at nighttime yeah because it's always Gotham like rainy nighttime always dark it's just the sun does not rise <laughs> in Gotham yeah. in any movie yeah 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 definitely good like they showed it for what it is it's a, it's a, it's a depressed impoverished shit, uh, city yeah. and um, and I I think that that was a really really good move not just showing the like the comic comic book version of Gotham mm-hmm. where it's like gargoyles and gothic architecture do you yeah, know what i mean yeah, like it yeah. looks like it looked like real poverty that transcended real that transcended above the uh like just locations i feel like too like it actually provided people that you felt like were real people and not just like yeah characters like a, a, a like you said like a comedic villain or it's like there's yeah. always just like two types of people like like uh, henchmen and they're like yeah like we're gonna get detective. him right boss yeah, yeah. yeah. sad yeah. detective or a henchman yeah. yeah but this one had like some children and some teenagers and some like a schoolyard and like you know yeah yeah i also felt real i also thought um yeah even like so like i think like in my but like the big thing of course is Joaquin Phoenix killing the acting but one of my favorite things was like the little details about characters like i saw in the bald clown guy who gave him the gun it's just like yo that's a guy who's in a poor situation who's trying to take back his power with firearms you know like kind of through yeah. like a power not power fantasy because he's not fucking batman but um just like in <laughs> general like he's just trying to take back his own life with you know the gun and he wants to give that kind of strength in this kind of impoverished area to you know the mentally ill guy uh, Arthur, but you know, but it's it's like a well-meaning thing because he has found like I just thought that like some of the solace in that, yeah, some yeah. of the subtle character things were really good. I wish they had been more inter like placed within the movie um, for various reasons, but I, little things like that I thought were executed really well. Yeah, yeah. Um, you mentioned Joaquin Phoenix because <laughs> uh, I I just want to say this honestly, and I would have laid this down on the table. Um, Heath Ledger is my favorite Joker of all time. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix is a close second. I think that I don't think if he had had yeah. a better script, because I went through like the Joker, like they have like an entire compilation of all the Joker scenes from Dark Knight immediately after I saw this, and I went. The real difference is, is like this guy doesn't have any lines. Like it just felt like yeah. he didn't have lines the whole movie. He just kept going. Like, yeah. Mom said that I should smile. And yeah, I'm just a lot of like happy. dancing, quiet. Yeah, exactly. Stuff like that. Uh, it's uh, yeah, I think Joaquin Phoenix could have performed better with a stronger script behind him. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, you said it right there. It's, it's just like he's good. And I think this movie would be not quite as uh, as viewable without him in it. It yeah. definitely wouldn't be as viewable. And to play devil's advocate, I actually like the fact that he didn't have much of a, as much of a script because as a character study, he just seemed like kind of a more daft. He didn't. I'm glad he didn't go on these like big diatribes of like yeah. talking about impoverishedness and whatnot. Just because oh yeah, I don't that think was, he was smart enough to yeah. do. He wouldn't be smart enough to do that. Like he's just like a mentally ill loner loser. And loner, lo- mentally or loner looters, I feel like probably don't talk a lot to like various people. So I appreciate. I felt like his dancing and his like the the constant kind of contortions he would do, like shirtless and stuff, wor- was kind of his script in a way. It's yeah. telling us certain things about him that he didn't need to verbalize. Very physical. I, I agree and disagree. Yeah. So I'm less talking about like not like going off on like it like you know about impoverishment or whatever because he his character actually doesn't care he just accidentally spurs that on but like the whole Mm. monologue with uh robert de niro was really bad script writing um 
Really? I because I was gonna cite that as a pro. Are you kidding? I me? thought that that this is what happens when you live scene. in a society that it's like, dude. I I thought that it was that so was going to be fucking bad, cringe and bad, dude. I feel like that whole third act, like once he's fully realized as the Joker, and once he's like really like the character that we saw him becoming throughout the entire movie, with like some hiccups here and there. I feel like generally that whole third act and everything leading up to him being on the show was very good. And then I feel like that scene when he was on the show, very strong. No, that was my very, very, that was my favorite. That was my favorite scene in the whole movie. It was so good. And it's just like, you kind of like had this feeling like, oh my God, is he going to kill Robert De Niro? Like, is he going to do it? I honestly was on the edge of my seat. I, I feel like that that is the movie that they wanted to show, but they needed more buildup. And I feel like, the only real hiccups were like, like I don't know, like the love interest dream sequence stuff. <laughs> you know. See, I like that. My actually, my favorite scene, the Robert De Niro's, the final scene was my second favorite. My favorite scene is when the moment you find out that that was all in his head, and he like breaks into that girl's house, and she's no, like, "Oh my yeah. god, you're Arthur, right?" You lived on. And right then, I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, mm. yeah. Oh. It's like, oh, it's just, really that and then bad. He just kinda, yeah. he's like soaking wet. And he doesn't look at her, but he's kind of like side eyes her. And then, he, and then I like the fact that it cuts to him leaving because because you never find out if he killed her. Or I don't what think happened. you see her again for the rest. You don't of the movie see her either. again, but like you know, you don't. It's you not really do, known, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I definitely agree with you there. Um, Nothing to say. Like, <laughs> no, but I, <laughs> yeah, I'll talk about it later. <laughs> it's like I, I the only thing. So the, throughout the entire movie, the only thing that I could say is is like a negative about that that dream sequence thing is that like I didn't know if him being on the show was like reality or not. It was, so th- throughout a lot of it, I was like, oh, so that's probably fake. Like he's probably not going to really be on the show he's going to imagine himself on the show yeah, and then that like that i don't know kill the, a hooker or something that was, was kind of the terrible. inference is that he was in the insane asylum like the whole time and that was all in his yeah. head and that none yeah. of it happened like i almost if they end up doing a sequel which i think they'll do what i think they should do maybe is yeah. more just different joker origin story because that was one of the things i found really compelling about the dark knight was he would like every time he put the knife to the person's mouth he like have a different story about how he got the scars I love a sequence of Joker films where they're all like different, different. tragic backstories yeah. for this character, but they're all really just in his head in the insane asylum. That's a fascinating concept. And I don't think anything like that has ever been done. No. And uh, I would love to see something like that. Um, Cause yeah, that's how you but, but really that, flesh out that character better than, yeah. cause after a certain point for me, the character kind of diluted down into just like four qualities. They were all done really well, but around hour and a half, hour 15 i was kind of done i kind of checked out i was like yep i've seen him do the laugh thing i've seen him do the contortion with the the weird rib cage thing i've seen him put on the face paint Uh, i've seen him dance it's not really gripping me but if they gave him things like that in many different backgrounds i think that'd be a lot more compelling from my perspective Hmm. I'd, be, yeah. I'd be into that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that's interesting. Uh, and the, that's like wrapping in uh, the uh, or roping in the the every, the Nolan Joker as well or the, the Heath Ledger Joker and, you know, displaying it as those different origin stories, I think, is actually I don't know if that's what they're going to do, I don't but I could will, see it. But it'd be really yeah. cool if they did. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I, I don't know. It's just like. Phoenix brought something to that role and something to that script that I don't think could have been executed by a, a lesser actor. And and I think uh, like I, I loved the idea that he has like a, an unconscious compulsion to laugh. That so, was I thought was, I, I, I was a I was a big fan of that as a as a character trait. I wish he pulled out the card and showed it to more people. I think that there were certain scenes where that could have been really effective, like when he kills yeah. the Wall Street guys. Like they didn't even see the card, and so like I think and that like been or and like they grab it and throw it over their shoulder or something like that. Yeah, just mm-hmm. kind of peppering it in. I think that that could have made things a little more effective. But when he did give out the card, I thought that that was really, really great. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's it's like it's like quality exposition. Yeah, that was really high quality. You know what I mean, yeah, it's it's like it is exposition, which generally is comes across as clunky, because sometimes people are just like saying what's go- about to happen in the movie. Um, but it was like he was saying it without saying it, and uh, and it, and it felt like a real world thing, like it was like a prop 
And you had to like read it really quick and be like, oh, it, it like felt you like you were looking through that woman's eyes as she was reading it. Yeah, because you were both seeing it for the first time. Yeah, it, and it made yeah. it made it make sense. Yeah, and, and I was like, I don't know if anyone has that, but I could totally see someone having that. Like it, people have compulsions, so why couldn't someone just totally. laugh randomly? You know, like makes sense. Yeah, it, it seemed like believable enough, and I think that's like one of. Phoenix's biz- biggest strengths as the Joker is that his mental illness felt like it was real. Like, it seemed like a real person could have that. Oh, yeah, I appreciated you know? that they didn't, like, tie it down, really. Like, they didn't have, like, a doctor be like, you have this, 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 and this. Yeah. Like, they kind of kept it. I mean, he completely disassociates, so he probably has some form of DID or schizoid you know, paranoia or something like that. I mean, he was on seven different kinds of drugs, but I like that they didn't like outright just be like, these are what you have. You have these disorders. Yeah. yeah. They said that about his mom when he finds out the yeah. truth about his mom. Yeah. So that, but that, so you can tell it's like one of those, oh, well, it runs in the family, but you don't know what it is exactly. So they kind of like, you know, alluded to it, but didn't actually say specifically to him. Yeah, so but they also infer that too. it's yeah. like trauma based too, which is like kind of, uh, yeah, it was, that was a little bit, weird for me because i'm like well is it genetic or was he tied to a radiator and beat the shit out of like which one is it both is it one or the other like i wasn't sure what they were trying to like what they were trying to get i would assume i would assume both i would assume it's like he stood no chance because his mental illness clearly runs in the family with his mother so he probably got passed down something but on top of that Exactly. physical abuse, abuse that he probably uh, clearly blacked the out perfect storm yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It's exactly. like I, like that. I like that it's what creates a joker yeah so to speak oh my God. yeah because like the truth of the matter is is like joker as a character is intentionally supposed to be a very unique and very specific case of everything that could go wrong and i think that's what they were trying to say like this is what happens when all of your cards are bad in society <laughs> when you've yeah. never been happy a day in your life yeah, never, a it's, it's really crazy how they cut all the funding to all the mental health stuff every but single just, one of them but just he fucking breaks down the way that he did just monumentally breaks know, man. down like, see, the, other people uh, were I mean, looting the city writing. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like yeah more but no, crazy no one was yeah. going on tv and killing people uh well because he had the worst of the worst is the idea i fucking i like, i hate that though i think that's so fucking stupid i don't know man i think I, that i, I think that I that's really like just that. like Oh, like, oh, it's such a tragic case. It's like, fuck you, dude. Like, one person isn't, like, special and it's okay and you're supposed to kind of feel sympathy when it's just like, oh, no, you just got dealt all the wrong... I think that's such a fucking... I just hate that as just, like, a... A down on your life. I think it's that's so. The character. That's not you know? the character. That is the character they Kinda made for is. this movie, though. Yeah, that's true. This is not that was very specific to this plot, and that's why. Yeah. Like, I really didn't like that because I think that it's like, you know, not excusing his behavior because I think that that's a fucking dumb narrative to this movie. But I do <laughs> think it's like, like it focuses so much on him. Uh, I, I think it's more compelling when a character has like a lot of bad cards but some good cards but they choose to kind of align themselves with the bad cards i think that that's more compelling as a character study than just being like oh what happens when all the shit happens and it's like obviously something bad i'm not an idiot like you know what yeah. i mean it's fucking yeah infuriating. I, I felt like in, i felt like the first third to half though he was still holding on to some good character qualities like Whenever he would see a child with a couple times, he was trying to make him laugh, and then he just got shot down by the mom, or like, you know, um, he, he he had some good in him. Like, you know, he would make his mom dinner and bathe her, and you know, he he just kind of got turned into the the nightmare. I don't know. But at first, he held on. At first, he was a human being. Like, I I, I appreciated I, that transformation. I don't know. He's no. I I I I disagree just because how things were framed. Um, with the like the doctor because like Mm. he said something like when i was having a lot of trouble with my mental illnesses i would say to people that i don't think i'm real and like when he said that that like really hit home for me and that i immediately went like he's pretending that he's okay not that he actually was okay and maybe that's just speaking from like a a, a level of personal experience and Mm. and me projecting that on the film that's totally valid but when he said that you know I don't think you can go, I'm okay when you're like bathing your mom 
as a 40 year old man and be like no this yeah. is, i'm holding on like, no, that, comfortable that is the beginning of any fucking movie about a psychopath and i thought it was way Always. too on the mo- the nose like like checklist of things like lives with his mom check <laughs> you know yeah. like imagines relationships with the girl down the hall and stalks her but check. There's, there's little things though like <clears throat> like he had some friends like the little person and the bald yeah. guy that like came to check on him they brought him whiskey and he when he gave him the gun he's like i always liked you like he but he also got clearly, him fired yeah he did yeah that guy sucked yeah but, he was a fake fucking friend uh the yeah. midget guy they didn't really have a relationship in the movie yeah 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 it's kind of that's tough fair. to say yeah, but but i mean i think that's like the nature i think of you know being someone so inwardly focused and like having a job like that and like you know, somebody reaches out to you in an act of kindness and then totally pulls the rug out underneath you. It's just like if someone like the little person who probably also felt othered, you know, was nice to yeah. him in any capacity, you'd probably remember that, you know. Maybe so I guess felt him. like that worked. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah I like that. Uh, yeah, pretty interesting. So my... Uh, I don't know. It, it was it was a uh, kind of cool to see a little person in like you know being specifically othered, and then like but like highlighting it as a point of like yeah it's pretty fucked up. <laughs> so so I thought that that was a good angle for the movie to take. And at first I was like yo like that's kind of rude, <laughs> but then I realized like exactly what the point they were trying to make was. But he doesn't like, murder yeah, anyone. Can. Exactly. Yeah. So. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, man. Um, Very weird. Yeah. I, I have a lot of weird mixed feelings about this movie. I do, too. And I think we're about to talk about some of the more negative sides of things. Because mm-hmm. we're, we're, I think I think it's about that time where we, we, we start getting into our cons here. Um, I would like, Ash, mm-hmm. or Jeremy, do you have a con yeah. that you want to start yeah. us off yeah, So it, I feel like pretty clearly uh, I can safely say that I probably like this movie m- quite a bit more than both of you guys because I w- went in having no expectations. And uh, ra- uh, Avery knows this, but um, I am not typically a fan of superhero movies, and I didn't really grow up reading comic books. So I have no uh, affinity towards... I'm sorry. <laughs> but I, didn't I comic think books that's kind of why I probably like this movie more because I liked it strictly based... Well, based on kind of two factors. One, I very, very much enjoyed the pretty blatant homage to like the 70s um, character study movies that I really like a lot, which, I mean, everyone's kind of labeling Taxi Driver and Dog Day Afternoon and... and uh, People I saw are talking about Taxi Driver. One for a little Cuckoo's yeah. Nest and even a little bit of The Warriors and, you know, you can bring a lot of Hon- movies into that. Honestly, I, I like all those movies. We've been watching a lot I of I felt Lynch. like that was... And I, I thought that, like, maybe, like, I think that this movie would have done really well in David Lynch's hand with the current script. D- does that feel off base to you? No, that, oh, well, I love Lynch as well, so I would be super down for that. <laughs> um, I'm super, I'm super cool with that. Uh, but this definitely felt like, like, kind of more of a, I mean, outside of Martin Scorsese, because that's the obvious, kind of more like a, like a Sidney, Sidney Lumet or like a Milos Foreman or, um, I just really, because I found it to be a very solid, character study which is why i liked it a lot because it had nothing to do with comic book it had nothing to do with superheroes um that's not true it, well it had ties like obviously there was <laughs> i do like that it, it had ties to it but there yeah. was no there was no superpowers there yeah. were no gadgets there were no it just felt like nothing felt like it was outside of the realm of the realistic if which you'd have yeah very strong if you'd have never yeah. heard of batman yeah. You could still watch this movie and, and be, get and, perfect enjoyment. And, yeah, you would never, you wouldn't leave with questions being like, "So what's the deal yeah. with this?" Like, yeah, you you wouldn't be like, you, I mean, you might be like, "Who the that. hell was that kid?" Or, but you then you would think like, "Oh, he's just being creepy to some, some rich kid." Was, yeah, you know, you didn't need to be. A fan Everything of was that. explained within the movie effectively enough that if you for some reason didn't know who Batman was, you sure. totally could get through this movie and probably in, enjoy it more. I, fe- I felt like some of the 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 detracting factors was the fact that it tied in so much with Batman. It was just like too c- fucking convenient. Sure. And and I, I it's ultimately a pro for me but somewhat of a con is it, like the idea that it even insinuated that Joker could be Batman's brother. I was like a really really worried I as that, that whole thing was more interesting happening. than what ended up I thought that that was an interesting take. Just because oh, the point man. the point of the Joker is he doesn't really have a backstory. That's like a huge yeah. part of the character. So when you look at it from like, oh, are they like they they took things in a bunch of different ways. Um, and I told you like 
my hope for the end was that he was going to kill himself on live TV. Um, I thought that that was going to be a that really would have been pretty bold. I yeah. think that that's what I thought was going to happen. I thought me too. I, I well, because like he was doing the, mo- the whole thing. Like, yeah. he was doing yeah. the motion. Yeah, yeah. Like his punchline was going to be a suicide. Yeah, yeah. I thought that so. that was going to be because I think that that would have been really, honestly, kind of a great punch at the end. More than just like I, I felt like the ending was kind of a cop out to the fucking insane asylum. I think that that's just a fucking lame way to end this movie. Uh, I think that's like a pretty piss poor generic nonsense for what is you know trying to be a very unique and interesting take on like using the superhero movie as a backdrop for a character study um yeah i thought that that it is a little predictable having it end in the insane asylum it's just like it was that but i i loved the red herring there because you really think he's gonna kill himself on tv and i think even he thought he was gonna do it until he got there and then it was like, I'm actually going to do this because he's a completely chaotic, evil yeah. character. I would have preferred you know? that inferring that he was going to kill himself on TV and then him actually doing it. I think that that's just, for me, I, I, I think that not enough movies have the balls to like fucking end it at the end of a movie. Just go, this is the end of the movie. Not going to be a sequel. Fuck you. Like... And if yeah, it would have been that, pretty intense. I would have respected yeah. it a lot more. Um, it's not really an overt You can't con. do that anymore, though. That's yeah. the thing. That's a con in and of itself, the fact that you can't do that anymore. Like, you, Why you, can't you? It's, it's exactly. You just can't. The I nature of, that, like... You, no, you can't. We Clearly, you can. Yeah. They just don't. They yeah. just don't, because they want to make money. It's, it's just the, the nature of, like, film universes now. It's just, like, they, they have to set it up so if there can be a sequel, there will be. Yeah. You know? And uh, like it would be impossible unless they went completely just like off the rails and mm-hmm. did something super unique, which we, you know would be kind of fun. Like the idea of an alternative backstory for no reason, just like no explanation, do something some totally similar. But I don't know. Um, one thing that I really would have liked to have seen, and uh, I talked to you, Jeremy, a little bit before we recorded, is uh, the the scene where he does stand up comedy. I would have loved if they really just went full on with the uncomfortability mm-hmm. of or uncomfortable uh you know what I'm trying to say <laughs> uh, like the, the whole thing of him just being on stage and bombing for like a long scene and just failing because it looked it really looked like they were about to do I it. I thought for sure they were going yeah, to. Yeah. Yeah. And as much as I so don't want to experience that, I did at the moment because you needed to see him get like booed and heckled and yeah. just have the, just that tense, like he laughs and no one else is and yeah. he doesn't know what to do. And I think that would have I been, was surprised they didn't actually push that. I think that would have been such That feels a like a director's good, cut type type. Yeah, exactly. Like the way it like looked, it was like just as it looked like he was about to start really getting booed off of stage. Yeah, that well, might have been cut. cut. That might have been cut out. To be fair, I think it might have been too. I think that Todd Phillips is too good at writing terrible jokes and it really would have actually been 40 <laughs> minutes of the film. Um <laughs> <laughs> no, that, I, don't I, know. I, I totally yeah, I don't agree. Know. That is something that was missing. And you know what? You could take out fucking five minutes of dancing and laughing and and doing the ribs thing. It was just so much. Like it felt this movie felt like a hu- it had a huge vacuum in it where he just did those things. Super effective at the beginning, but man, I was fucking sick of it. I don't know. I it might just be me. It might just be me. Hmm. Yeah, I, w- I would have really liked to have seen something like that because I was bracing for it. I was like, f- like I felt myself physically cringing as I was going into that scene because I was thinking like, oh my god, it's really gonna go in this direction. Yeah, he's gonna bomb and it's gonna be so awkward for yeah, him for and you everybody. sitting there to watch him. Yeah, it's like almost like it would have been embarrassing to see. And I and I think that that could have really just that would have been more uncomfortable to watch than any of the violence in the entire movie. I have to be honest, uh, I feel like I'm very, I know I'm very desensitized because of just the things I put in front of my face, but uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, hearing so many people talk about how they left the theater and, and so many people I know are like, oh, it was, it was like, un- it was so uncomfortable. They like squirming. I didn't squirm once. No. I just sat there. I was eating yeah. popcorn, drinking my cherry Coke. Me like, too. <laughs> like, this ain't no thing. Like, it's yeah. just, oh, we get stab someone in the eye with scissors. Okay, whatever. Like, I've seen that a billion times. Like, yeah. is that the scene? I was like, every, oh, yeah, every weird. time there was like, <laughs> he's like, snuffed his mom out. I was like, is that the scene they were talking about? Yeah. And then him bombing, I was like, is this going to be the scene? I never got that way. Yeah. It's, it's just like, it took it you dark. so close so many times. Yeah, it was dark and uncomfortable, but like, not to the extent. Like, I actually mentioned this to Avery earlier as well. I was like, there's certain movies 
I'll just ramble up. Requiem for a Dream, Schindler's List, American History X. Great movies, but I'm probably never going to sit and watch again. Because I'm yeah. not going to be like, I'm going to pop some popcorn and throw on American History X. It's going to be a grand old time. Or Requiem or something yeah. like that. Yeah, However, yeah. I might. I don't want to see it anytime soon. But I might want to see this again yeah. later. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, I don't want to put that on because that's going to give me an uneasy feeling. Like, yeah, I don't really get that many yeah. uneasy feelings. Overhyped. So I don't know what, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what these other people are if the idea of walking out of the theater, it, it, it all strikes me as this, like, insane publicity stunt. It totally for, is. It's it's like this outrage culture. It's, like, moral panic about movies. It's, and, like, now fucking... Is that the movie's fault, though, or is that... That's a, the marketing, a, probably. A, well, also the yeah. director's being a fucking moron uh, and, like, going <laughs> out and being like, yeah, I have a political message. Just, and now, like, the far left and the far right are, like, fighting about whose movie this is, and I'm just like... I don't know, guys. It does, it's it was not okay. a political thing. Like, it's like, yeah. It was so apolitical and like, like I don't know. Yeah. The, the, Did you feel it was timely? Did you feel like it? No. Like I felt it wasn't. Not at all? No. I, no I, it's so dumb. Like, the, I, I, I didn't feel like, it didn't really have a huge statement for me. It just, it was a lot of vacuous space. Not a lot of fucking shit happened in this movie for a two hour runtime. I felt like, you know, in a lot of ways, what happened with Arthur over the course of the movie felt a little bit unearned in terms of just like, like everyone was like flipping them his shit because he killed three like Wall Street guys. It almost felt like my mom, my mom said, I don't think he killed enough people to like have all this like controversy around his ideas and like inspire an entire movement. Like that seems so like far fetched. I mean, like it is far fetched as a movie, but it it was just I didn't really come out of the theater going, wow, like I'd like learn something about society or myself or even these characters, you know? Yeah. It didn't really have much to, I feel like it didn't really have much to say necessarily. However, what it was kind of showcasing felt in the moment. I mean, just because the modern day political America, the, the yeah. gap is so obvious the, now. It's the, only the growing. inequality and, gap. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I don't know about you guys, but I'm constantly telling some of my friends like, fuck Jeff Bezos. Like there's no reason he needs yeah, that much that. money. Like you all know? sorts of things where yeah. I'm like the ultra wealthy are all pricks. And yeah. Then, like 100%. they can solve all these problems, but no we're, one does. We're, and then, yeah. 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 I'm not kissing Oprah's ass cause she gives a million dollars. Like she still has like, uh, I know ninety nine like, more million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, she, she's and still fine. Also, yeah. they they totally portray Thomas Wayne as a fucking psychopath because like Arthur goes up to his kid, gives him flowers, and puts his fingers in his mouth. And the next day, he's like, "Oh, you're the guy who came by my house." Like, no, you automatically <laughs> fucking deck that guy. You don't hear him out. You fucking you hit that and guy. And also, but he's a how case. about the the way under reaction. From uh, from Will Alfred, Wilfred, Alfred, Alfred. Like the the the, the, but, the Alfred, butler, Alfred. yeah, Alfred. How about the way under reaction to that? Well, that he he might, I mean, he might not have seen the fingers in his mouth. He come from behind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. But he, he, he was just like, who are you? Talking to the kid. You're just a huh, grown seen, man who gave this weird. child I'm saying, some. I'm saying way under reaction from Batman from Bruce. Just you just stood there like a weirdo fucking kid. I'd be like, fuck your fingers out of yeah, yeah. the fuck are you? Like, even as a kid, you'd be like, no, thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> he was like 10. Yeah, he was old enough where he <laughs> yeah. should have recognized that that was fucking weird. Yeah. Wait, wait a second. Yeah. So is the Joker going to be like, if they bring Batman into this universe, is the Joker going to be like 60? Like, what is their plan there? Because they I obviously so. want to reboot it. So they want to be like an like, old man? They might do a numbers crunch, right? They might do like a, instead of he was in Arkham Asylum for 30 years, he was in Arkham Asylum for 15 years. Do you, do you, do you see what I'm saying? And then they'll bring him in. I, I, like, I think that's, that's well, like a stark maybe, inevitability. Yeah, the fact that they showed Batman's entire origin story oh, so inside of this movie. And the whole point of Batman's origin story is it's just a random guy. It's not like someone associated with the Joker. That completely yeah. deflates the whole thing of his shitty backstory for a shitty fucking superhero. I, I do like that they linked it together because I feel like the two stories are intertwined. It's just 
underwhelming as a background story is really the truth of the matter and yeah, it's and just like it makes sense that it would happen there but it, like ultimately it was it's just like it's just like oh that happened too okay of course yeah you, but you knew that already that's always been the backstory hasn't it yeah and they've showed it so many times it's just like it doesn't matter anymore it's just, oh there it is again I'm seeing yeah. the, it's like spider-man movies yeah. it's like there's been so many spider-man origin movies at this point, that it's like you, you all know it, and it, it movies, Spider Man movies are better when they skip over it. Yeah. If they had skipped over this and alluded to the fact that Thomas Wayne had, or whatever his name was, Thomas Wayne had died, that that probably would have been better. Yeah, like, I, mean, I would like, have preferred to see a newspaper that said Thomas you, Wayne you don't shot even have dead. To fucking show it, because like. You could just skip all that, and then you could skip and Batman's tell him the origin. Next movie. <laughs> or yeah, just or just don't tell Batman's origin story. It's so fucking dumb. It's not that. It's like, oh no, like it sucks that your parents died, but then you grew up in a mega mansion. You could probably get all the therapy you want. Um, you're probably gonna be okay. You have an Alfred. Yeah, you have a surrogate dad. To be honest, yeah. probably more of a dad than. Oh, yeah, Thomas Wayne was. Yeah, he, he was busy. Did, he had yeah, mergers he, to yeah. worry about or whatever. Yeah. What I don't the know. Fuck whatever does people Wayne Enterprises about. do? <laughs> what do they, they make money? Do they <laughs> manufacture poor people? Like, what do they do? <laughs> In a way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Fucking metal. Eat the rich. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I I felt like this movie thought it was bigger than this, but I felt like the two messages were like the mentally ill need, need better public health care, which is fucking true. Yeah, that's true. You can true. thank Ronald Reagan for that. Fuck you, Reagan. Yeah, yeah. Fuck uh, Reagan. and then, also for that milk shit, that fucking that cheat. You know what I'm talking about? What? <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, that. Back when he was president, there we were going through the health food craze, and so everyone was drinking low-fat milk, and so we had an excess of milk fat. So he uh, basically gave money to lower the price of cheeses that were being developed. So that's why we have like Domino's with like cheese inside of the cheese, uh, and it made us all fat. So Shit, yeah, hell yeah, yeah. But that cheese inside of cheese is pretty good, though. Yeah, I mean, you gotta I, put cheese inside your cheese, girl. Yeah. <laughs> I don't if. I don't know if I can say fuck you, Reagan, for more cheese. I like cheese. Yeah, I do too. I, I, I'm okay with more cheese. Honestly, I'm gonna say thanks, Reagan. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you're it's still a prick. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, basically, it was just like we need better public health care for mentally ill people, which is totally true. I mean, yeah, like totally co completely true. legitimately I true. Granted, that's like um, two scenes of the movie, but. Yeah, and then I think the other thing was, oh man, I had another negative. It, it was like uh, basically classism. Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's just like rich people are going to be rich and they're going to defend just the rich people while poor people are going to rally and try to eat the rich. And I think that that was the entire movie is really what it was trying to say, which uh, honestly, kind of a cool idea to wrap that up in a Joker, Joker movie. Joker, oh my God. A Joker movie. Uh, I, I, I actually kind of fucking liked that. Uh, I feel like attempting to like make those points within a movie is a good idea but is totally going to be misconstrued um by people who of all uh, political backgrounds yeah like people want to own it and like we've seen it like like the lefts are like this is a left movie and then the rights are like this is a right movie and then Joker himself literally says I have no political motivation yeah it's, in the like, last scene. it's kind of weird though like that they have like oh these are like messages about society but then it's like yeah but our lead character he doesn't give a shit about that it just happened on accident yeah. like whatever yeah Almost like advocating and it's simultaneously like props the Joker up as a hero for being a mur mass murderer and demonizes the mentally ill, mm -hmm. which is like a conflicted and frankly just bad message. Well, I think. Remember, all people but, who are mentally ill, Avery, are violent, dangerous criminals. If you don't, if they're not on pills, they will kill you and they will start. As soon as he got motivation. off his medication, man. It's Which like they did, fucking they ridiculous. Didn't yeah. They didn't really fucking play into that much. They're just like, they mention it and you don't really see that degenerate. Like you have the one big disassociation with the girl, but you don't like wholeheartedly like see. I could have done a little more with it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like they could have like dialed back some of the symptomatic things and then kind of 
If you guys found out some of these questions were answered with a 30 minute extended version on when it comes out to rent, would you rent it and watch it? No. Yeah, probably. No, knowing knowing that so. those sorts of things get massaged out. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I can see myself watching this movie again. I just don't. Care. Yeah, I, I initially like thought like maybe, maybe fucking not. Maybe I've seen it the one time and I'm done. But like talking through it, it's like I'm kind of like, you know, I, I feel like almost like there might be something that I may have missed. And and I'm curious to see if they release an extended cut, 100. percent I would go, I would go back through and watch it because I, I do feel like there are scenes like him bombing on stage. I, I'm so confident that's a deleted scene. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it just like it looked like a cut. They had a weird edit mm-hmm. that looked like something that they could have done in post to go into this dream sequence thing. I could totally, totally see that being a deleted scene, and and I want to see that. I like some like horrible part in my brain yeah. just wants to I would see. Be interested. It. I've got if YouTube it comes videos out for you. Thirty minute long. I'm, I'd see it. Yeah, I got YouTube videos of people bombing if you need them. <laughs> I'm going to see it as it relates to this movie. I would I would be interested. I was, like, looking forward to it and simultaneously dreading him getting up on stage and bombing. And and I, that was, like, with the moment that I realized, like, ah, that's a little bit of a disappointment. Yeah. That was the first thing I think I noticed in the movie that, like, really, really stuck out to me as, like, oh, they're really just going to cut away from this? This looks so interesting in a, in a horrible character perspective way like such a pivotal moment but i guess that's how it goes that's how it is all um, right should we get into halfway through yeah let's let's pull it back around mm-hmm. we're, we're we've already got them for an hour and 20 minutes it's okay we did yeah. great we, it's a special episode we got jeremy johnson hey. yeah. yeah and then next week uh, we got three another. people talking i mean you had to listen yeah. to me ramble for an extra couple minutes so <laughs> hell yeah i'm just, hell I'm just yeah. adding time i'm just adding length yeah. padding that so, episode <laughs> getting that content <laughs> you can edit me out it's fine I can no the call spot. your parents <laughs> let's see <laughs> your disappointment stuff. Oh man! <laughs> oh no, no, we're not gonna do that. Marathon. <laughs> Get up, kiss, brew some coffee. Yeah. Um, you want to dox Avery and have him cry for twenty minutes? That'd be chill. No, we <laughs> we already tried this and it wasn't a great episode. Can I? No, can I? Can I dox your last, your last address? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're talking, uh, we, we're, go- we're going into the, the final segment here. Basically pretty simple. We come up with five words. We come up with a, uh, a rating uh, out of 10. And then we give it a brief, you know, three, four sentence review. Uh, and whether or not you would recommend somebody goes to it to uh, see it at the theater. Um, I know it's a lot of pressure. Do you want to start us off? I mean, I have a couple of ex-girlfriends that can say I don't perform well under pressure, but I will. Erectile oh, dysfunction. Oh, oh, Todd Phillips is my writer. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Just kidding. That's Todd Phillips it. is my writer. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. That's not my five words. <laughs> it could be. It could. Well, it might be. Shit. Let me, uh, five words. Yeah. I know it's hard. I always have to, like, count them out of my head. Uh... <laughs> I'm going to say, yeah, it's dark. That's life. Hell yeah. Bummer, Hell dude. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tie it in there. We'll, we'll, we'll bring a tie around, reach around. If you had to give it a rating out of 10, what, what, what do you feel, Jeremy? Uh, I feel like I'm going to hear a couple moans in my ears, but um, I'm going to give it a soft eight. Soft eight? That's fine. That's All lower right. than I expected. All right. Me. Well, I mean. All right. Well, he, the reason I seem like I like it so much is because my expectations were so low. Yeah. So th- going in thinking, oh, I'll probably think it's just okay, like a three, four, then being able to say soft eight, like that jump is something I don't experience very often when it comes to movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Been there. So I appreciated that. So. Hell yeah. yeah. Soft eight. Hell yeah. That's strong. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's good. I yeah. consistently yeah, I mean, ruin fair. Avery's expectations for movies by leaving and being like, I hated that. And then Avery's Dude, like, Dude, don't fucking that. text me. Because <laughs> he goes to see the movies before me. Usually it's just how it ends up. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I typically like to see them the day before we record. But uh, yeah, so that'll happen. And he'll be like, it was horrible. It, it happens like every time. And I'm like, <laughs> I go in, I go in like with such low expectations. And then I think like when the movie actually is pretty good pretty okay and like makes me think it's like an eight or a nine or a ten <laughs> i'm like actually is there like a good cop bad cop kind of scenario here where like you 
one of you typically likes and the oh, other yeah. one typically doesn't. Ash is the villain of the podcast. Yeah, well, okay, I think sometimes that's pretty clear at this point. So, sometimes we agree. Like, in, yeah. in chapter one, we agreed uh, The Shining. But, like, you know, and then sometimes the roles reverse. For example, Mean Girls 2. Oh, barely God. lethal. That's a real thing, by the way. Both of those movies are real. Mm. You should watch. Wait, mean it's, Girls. Not, it's not called. It's not <laughs> called Mean Girls Two: Barely Lethal. No, no it's no. called Mean Girls Two, and then there's another movie called Barely Lethal. Oh, I thought I was hoping it was called Mean Girls Two: Colon Barely Lethal. Oh my god, you just invented the perfect movie. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, yes. I don't even know what it's about, but that sounded a lot more interesting than just Mean Girls Two. <laughs> no, yeah, it was not not good, but I had to pretend like I liked it for like an hour. It was bad. Yeah, um, yeah this is the thing. <laughs> Avery, why don't you uh, hop on with some uh, five words? So I'm my five words are pretty easy here. Uh, they're Joaquin brought his all, but uh, and the reason is is because I feel like Joaquin Phoenix is one of the best parts of this movie. I feel like they tried really really hard to put a political motivation behind this, and it was there in places, but sometimes it fell flat and sometimes it worked. Uh, and like really, it comes down to the rich people are evil, and like it, it just it seems like that's where it is and you know like that's that's like okay i feel like from a from a film perspective like it it was kind of a flat movie i didn't really recognize or enjoy many of the shots cinematograph cinemographically whatever you want to say um but i overall i felt like it was decent enough it kept my interest throughout the entire movie especially towards the end uh and i'm gonna give this movie a a, a hard seven out of ten i enjoyed it far more than i expected so we're to. pretty close your hard seven yeah. my soft eight it's yeah it's so right it's right in the there it's, it's right the in there yeah and, uh, you know, I, I think that this movie, especially me, like, thinking, like, oh, God, fucking Joker, Christ, kill me. Like, going in with that, I think, really, when it was a competent movie, when it had, like, acting as good as it was, it, it really shot my rating up. Because I was like, wow, this actually was pretty good, especially given some of the other Warner Brothers DC yeah. films that have come out in the last few years. They, the they tend to be real hit or miss. Yeah, and given the director, I was like, is this going to be the hangover, stupid jokes, or is it going to be like... Are you? Are you, know. you? Does this movie make you any way excited for whatever his next movie is? Uh, the if untitled Hulk movie. Hogan biopic? <laughs> is I, that real? That is, that is what that's is his next, next movie? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, then nah, I'm Are interested. Serious? Yeah, I want to see that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that sounds fucking awesome. Yeah. Shouldn't we wait oh till he's God. dead? <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> Shouldn't oh my we wait God. till Hulk now, Hogan dies? Is, wait, that's really Joaquin Phoenix? Is going to be Hulk Hogan? <laughs> no. <laughs> Todd oh, Phillips' okay. next like, movie. Todd, I meant, that's why I meant Todd Phillips, the director. Oh, oh the director, okay. Yeah, Todd Todd okay. Uh, yeah, I totally want to see that. You want to go see that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's go see that. Uh, cool. We'll, we'll talk about that. And th- then whenever that comes out, Jeremy, you can be on again. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. You're only, you're our Todd Phillips guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, cool. Yeah, hell yeah. I, I, I'm going to say, like, uh, you should probably, I don't know, you could wait till this movie's on VOD. And yeah, probably you totally get, could. You know, it's, it's like, it's good, but... You, you don't There's need nothing, to see it in a theater. Exactly. It's like, not shot theater's expensive. Yeah, 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 you yeah know, exactly. You're, you're not missing out on any insane experience by not seeing it in the theater. You can wait until it comes out. On, Unless it's on like, Netflix or Amazon yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So, Ash, what do you think? Give us five All words. All right. Well, my fu- oh, God, I really want to do the dumb one. Can I do the dumb one, Avery? Do yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. All right. We live in a society. <laughs> um, <laughs> Listen, like, this movie wasn't boring. It wasn't bad. But it is very stupid that Avery and I were forced to go see this movie. I'm glad we saw it, but, like... I'm glad I saw it. No, I'm totally (laughs) glad I saw it. It's very dumb that, like, we had to ride the wave of the Joker. Um, This movie's weird. It kind of was a bunch of nothing uh, at the same time as being pretty engaging. Um, there are like 50 different things that I would have liked to have seen that would have been a little different. That being said, uh, one of them, get rid of the Gary Glitter song, because that was weird. Oh, I forgot about that. We didn't even talk about that. Didn't fuck- that was weird. That's a guy yeah. who literally got arrested for pedophilia in Thailand. You know how fucking hard that is? That's pretty fucking mm-hmm. hard to do. Um, twice, I think. Yeah, twice. twice. And then went back he to England in 2015. Because <laughs> yeah. he, he, he wasn't he, welcome back into the UK. 
But then oh, he, no. he did come back to the UK and immediately was hit with like three rape charges of underage girls. So, and then if he, you've seen a picture of him, it makes sense of he's really weird looking. Oh my god! I don't I don't know what he looks like. I just knew that it happened. Yeah, very weird yeah. move. He looks uh, like someone whose name is Gary Glitter. Oh yikes! That's not good. That's a creepy name. <laughs> yeah. It is a creepy name. Um, yeah. So yeah, generally, you know, the movie's not bad. It kind of has a again muddled political message, but that doesn't make it as bad as Rambo: Last Blood. It's a lot better. Um, <sighs> I'm gonna give this a a soft six. I thought it was a pretty middling movie overall. Uh, you know, done very well, led by a really good actor, but I don't think he could save the script by himself. Healthy. That's strong. This this was a generally positive movie. I feel like we have, that averages out to just a just a normal seven. A uh, straight seven. I think that's a pretty that's accurate. Which is pretty, which is pretty yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like it, it definitely. It wasn't a bad movie. It wasn't a bad movie. It had no. its flaws, but I just yeah. I think that it is. I think just from my perspective, we got to tone it down a bit. People are calling this a fucking masterpiece, saying it should win Oscars. Maybe an acting oh, Oscar. Probably not like, Maybe, maybe. Maybe I don't an know, acting Joaquin, Oscar. though, dude, dude. Joaquin's just so fucking good. He's really good. <laughs> but, like, yeah. the amount of hype this movie has right now, I think, like, it's good it's, that we kind of brought it back down to earth. Yeah. I feel like it's mostly fanboys. Oh, 100%. Yeah. People I think we, like, we've talked about this a little bit before, Jeremy. Like, the, the, the concept, like... Uh, we don't like to talk about Rotten Tomatoes scores a lot and for, for a specific reason. And it's because the critical score is always lower than the audience score because the audience score is people who are interested in the source material. So they're going to give it a higher rating. To, like, almost always. Yeah. I, yeah. Man, honestly, I, I would have said that a lot of times critics give movies great reviews and audiences are like, that was whatever shit. What was that piece of garbage? And they're I, like, I, you didn't get it. And I don't yeah, know. yeah. I, I, I bet you ways, there's a guess, stark but. disparity <laughs> When it's something like this with like like such a strong comic book like source material backing mm-hmm. and people who are just enamored by the idea of the yeah. Joker, it's about twenty one percent difference. Yeah, it's what, like what high, is it? It's high sixties critics and like yeah. high 90, 80s 90-ish, and high 90s, 90-ish something yeah. I think yeah. for so the it's, audience. It's ninety is what I saw. and sixty nine. Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> so that's about what we gave it. Average yeah. up to a seven. Guess about what a movie seven. reviewers now. I guess we're uh, professional critics. I guess welcome to the team, Jeremy. I, 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 I tend to agree with critics a lot more than audience. I'll, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I, I think so. Not to like toot my stupid. own horn, but yeah. we've we've definitely seen some movies that, that we've talked about, and we've been like, "Wow, how is the rating so bad for this?" Because it's like not nearly as bad of a movie as people try to make it out to be. Even critics. Yeah. Um, I, I think often uh, critics especially like tend to view I mean like it, and it's almost like you can't even help it but tend to view things it, within the lens of what's the current film landscape like we watched Van Helsing not a good movie mm-hmm. but we watched it just last week and we were like how because it has like a 20 percent on rotten yeah. tomatoes and we're like how the fuck because it actually was kind of a fun movie it was stupid but it was right. like it was way more fun well than they have 20%. i'm not sure about their i'm not ex- obviously i don't know exactly what their algorithm is but a lot of places or a lot of things someone will give it like a three out of five which isn't a terrible review it's yeah. just kind of like okay middling and yeah. then they think that's a that's a rotten score so if like everyone gives it threes then you have like a zero percent because it's all rotten scores yeah. but we're in actuality it's like well it's yeah. actually everyone giving it like a C. Yeah, yeah. Like like watchable. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like I think of something when Sometimes I think of something that twenty percent, I'm like, that is an unwatchable movie. Like that that is so bad, like you shouldn't go and see it. But, you know, like obviously whatever algorithm they have makes it look that way, which I think is unfair. Yeah. But so we try not to go off that too much. Fucking, but. Uh, yeah, we don't yeah. even go to Rotten Tomatoes to look at anything. We, we about really, fucking really movies. talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. We talk, you so, know, a little yeah. bit of numbers, but yeah, so, but we did it, guys. We did Joker. We Bring talked about back it. on Jeremy because you were a fantastic hey. guest. Yeah. Great hey. insight. I'm, so good. I'm ghost adding through this microphone and high fiving you instead of strangling you. Oh, oh my god! Oh, I saw sorry. him do it. Are you okay? Ash. Ash. <laughs> that was an little, aggressive high five. Gave right? a little bop. <laughs> that's oh. that's the noise it made. That's not it. <laughs> I didn't expect to bring up Bill Cosby twice in this uh, Joker podcast, but you know. Yeah. Go back and Wait, listen what again. Was the first <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. I'm going to give you a put uh, pop. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you, Jeremy, for being on. Seriously, I had a good no, time. Hey, thank it's you. Always I fun talking time. about movies. Um, I just- 
Yeah, hell yeah. Kicked it and drank beer and got <laughs> about <laughs> talked about it. That's what the show is. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do every week. Yeah. Yes. Well, all right. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys all so much. We love you all so much. Goodbye. <laughs>